Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. There's still so many so what we got going on here is <laughs> there's a possible serial killer in st louis uh so far he attempted to murder a 28 year old female uh, her identity is currently unknown uh, in the 4500 block of Adelaide Avenue on September 16th. Uh, just a few hours later, he killed uh, Pam Abercrombie, uh, who's a 49-year-old black female uh, on North St. Louis sidewalk. Uh, let's see. Three days later, or no, three days before that, he killed Marnie Hayes, a, a 16-year-old black female, uh, she was found dead, uh, having been shot several times uh, in St. Louis County. And then on September 19th, he shot um, Casey Ross, 24-year-old male, uh, at 1500 block of Malamphy Street. Um, it doesn't say his race, though. Um, reports in the news are saying that this serial killer is targeting black female sex workers yeah uh however one of the relative the uh, relative of one of the um victims said that that didn't really apply to their cousin because she wasn't a sex worker um and apparently casey ross was a hustler uh so i'm not sure where they're getting this uh sex worker thing from but two years ago uh, in 2019, there were similar killings done in East St. Louis, which is pretty much just a half skip, uh, a hop, skip, and a jump from St. Louis on the Illinois side. Uh, Sandra Reckman, a 49 year old female, was found on July 9th shot to death in an overgrown area on 56th Street in Washington Park. Uh, her body was dumped there. Uh, Bridget Williams, a 56-year-old female, was found less than 24 hours later, uh, shot at John Thornton Memorial Park. Her body was also dumped. Uh, Amanda Laguerre, a 38-year-old female, found su uh, Sunday, July 21st. Uh, the body was dumped on the side of the road in East St. Louis. She had been shot once in the neck. So what are you guys' thoughts on this? First of all, do we have caliber on all the weapons? No the the police no, I... have the police have not given a whole lot of information. Um, I and, found that when I tried looking too. Yeah, every article I found, they give very little information. Uh, yeah. They don't. Uh, all that's really said is that uh, he's targeting black sex workers, but there's no evidence that these uh, victims were sex workers. For one. Uh, now, the East St. Louis victims uh, were all in a high drug populated area, uh, and they had been known drug, uh, uh, drug addicts as well. Uh, the recent ones, uh, like I said, it didn't even say what Casey Ross or the unknown females uh, races are. Um, and it said very little about Marnie Hayes and Pam Abercrombie. Those were the only two whose uh, race had been identified. Yeah. From uh, some of the reports and stuff that I've watched, they did an interview with a friend of one of the victims. And she said that she didn't think it's a serial killer. Um. It was, it was one of the, I, I believe it was the NBC news station there. Mm -hmm. And, but they didn't show her face. They just showed her feet. She said she didn't think it's a serial killer. Um, I believe she said it might be like you said, like drug related killings. Right. See, that's another possibility. It could be drug related or gang initiation as well. St. Louis and too. East St. Louis are both high gang populated areas. But the fact that the police have called in the FBI for assistance in this, 
does kind of steer us in the direction that maybe they think uh, it could potentially be a serial killer. Yeah, it's true. There are a lot in a in a short period of time too. Like, right? Um, yeah, which which isn't typical from what I've read and seen about gang violence. It's usually a, a one one off, and then you don't hear anything for a while, and then mm -hmm. another one kind of right. But this feels it, serial. It, yeah, it doesn't and, seem like I don't know. Maybe the most recent two aren't possibly connected. So maybe that one that's saying, "Oh, well, my cousin's not into sex trafficking." I mean, there's no. You don't always know what your family's doing, exactly. so maybe totally. it's possible that she is doing it, and they just don't realize it. They don't know, right? But at the same time, maybe this that could be a lone case. Maybe she's not into sex trafficking, and maybe she uh, was a wrong place, wrong time situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Possibly, yeah. and if it was uh, gang related, chance normally gangs will take credit for the uh, crime itself. Uh, right. Just uh, uh, for street credibility, you know. Uh, also, and they wouldn't really like waste the... time with dumping a body either. Right. Yeah. It also feels like local cops would kind of know if it was gang related right away, and right. If they knew that they'd yeah. pull in the FBI yeah. with with if it being a gang related issue. You know. It, also, with the the dumping of the bodies, like they don't say like if they were missing or if anybody ordered them missing or mm -hmm. anything usually with serial killers if they're dumping a body i've noticed they usually take them for days or you know right. yeah. yeah they're not going to move the body from one spot to another right real quick uh since i skipped the introduction uh since this is going on to uh youtube this is for psychology of the unknown uh we have with us jared graham uh from what was your uh podcast called with john Masters of the Geek first. Masters of the Geek first. Yeah. Look us up on Facebook. <laughs> uh, they of course. Uh, he's of course in limbo right now because John passed away. John uh, started my other YouTube channel with me called Comageddon. Uh, Josh is a former. Uh, you retired from the army, didn't you? Uh, I got medically retired out uh, after ten years. And. I asked Josh to join us because when I give my profile, uh, there's a strong possibility that uh, the unsub in this case could have military experience, more than likely Army as well. So I wanted mm. to get Josh's perspective on this. We've also got Ben Hunter here who narrated my book, Jack the Ripper, The Man Behind the Blade, which you can see behind us here, behind me here. Great book. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so... Let's go ahead and uh, continue with our discussion. Uh, uh, when I was watching uh, some of the newscasts, they were saying that 2020 also had killings, but nothing like this. 19 had killings, um, not really anything like this. But um, it's if they're fresh, maybe a couple years in, couldn't they, uh, a serial killer, try something? Be yeah. like that the that M might not be for me and then do others the, other. M the mo will evolve over time it's the signature that stays the same yeah, yeah. uh now on a reddit page uh one redditor uh wh which is where i got the connection to the east st louis uh killings um also kind of um introduced similar crimes in dayton ohio in 2018 okay uh jasmine wadsworth a 39 year old black female was found in santa clara neighborhood shot to death on june 14th uh, amanda fella a 34 year old white female found in the santa clara neighborhood july 27th um she died as the result of a gunshot wound to her head uh crystal garcia a 30 year old white female found in the santa clara uh, santa clara neighborhood on September 26th, shot in the head and dumped behind an empty house. Uh, Dina Prendergast, 39, of Kettering, was found behind a vacant home at 17 East Hudson Street, September 15th, 
detective said she was naked and mutilated with signs of strangulation. Oof. See, the I mean, first... that, one, that one's out of typical for all the other victims because right. the other ones seem, were all shot, right? This one seems yeah. a lot more personal and, right. and uh, yeah. Um, Could he have done that one to somebody that wronged him and then it... maybe decided the strangulation mutilation ain't for me need to do it a quicker faster way it, it is possible mm -hmm. um let's see here uh jasmine wadsworth was june 14th of 2018 amanda fella july 27th of 2018 crystal garcia september 26th uh so if it was the same individual it looks like he did jasmine and amanda first with gunshots uh perhaps uh, attempted the mutilation of dina and then went back to doing the uh, shooting of Crystal. Um, and if this is the same individual for East St. Louis and St. Louis, that would mean that he would have traveled, uh, possibly moved to the area uh, between 2018 and 2019. Which would yeah. make sense if there were a lot of killings in that area in that time, he'd want to get out of there. Yeah. And right. especially the fact that all four murders happened in the Santa Clara neighborhood, the same neighborhood that's known to frequent drug uh, addicts, drug traffickers. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that one of the bodies was mutilated and uh, strangled and the other ones were gunshot victims, um, normally if it was drug related or gang related, uh, like I said, the gang or the uh, drug um runner would take credit for it at least on the street to uh yeah to increase his street cred you know and that's the kind of thing you figure the local cops would hear you know with their informants and stuff they'd know that this is most likely related to a gang issue we're calling the fbi because this doesn't say gang you right. know All right uh yeah, that's another thing. They don't, if it's gang related, they don't usually get the FBI involved. No, no, uh, unless it's, you know, biker gang, like, yeah, stuff like that. And it does Term. look I, I, on the next page here, it does look like there's one other victim in Ohio. Uh, Kathleen Driscoll, 31, found on January 12th, uh, whether that's 2018 or 2019, I'm not sure. Uh, she was lying in the bushes of a vacant lot, uh, wrapped in blue fabric and bound with black tape. Uh, the toxicology results found fentanyl, morphine, cocaine, methamphetamine, and alcohol in her system. Wow. That one, mm, that one almost sounds like an overdose where yeah. they basically were like, we don't know what to do with her. Let's right. roll her up in this and put her in the bushes. Right. Like other Same. other drug addicts maybe were like, oh God, she's dead, man. What do we do? Right. right. That's what that feet yeah. you know, on its face. Yeah. That's what that one feels like, more so than a signature. Now it was the exact same neighborhood as the others, though. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's that, why I yeah, that's, that's that good to note. Well, like you said yeah. though, it, it's a very high drug related area. Right. right. So I mean if those ha if those first four occurred being dumped in vacant lots, then how drug drug dealers see, oh shit, she died. We we gotta do something with this. Well, we can make it look like it mixes with these other ones here by dumping it yeah. in this vacant lot. They right. all know it's happening. Right. Uh, that was... that way, if it did happen in <laughs> January of 2019, yeah, that, that could very well be what happened. Now, if it happened before the others. That changes the story entirely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I feel like um, based on, you know, some of the stuff, some of these things that come out, it, it almost feels like there's two things going on here. It almost feels as if there's a serial killer that knows that world mm -hmm. really well mm -hmm. to the point where he knows that he's going to be able to get victims that fall into a category where police are going to be like, it's probably drug related. You know, it's probably drug related or gang related because it's here. And then so it's I, I feel like it's partially separating out the victims that we we can tell right away are probably not associated with the killer. 
and and focus on the ones like for me if i was a profile i think i'd focus on the gun related ones right away right because especially because the most recent ones are gun which leads me into my profile of the uh killer uh this is likely this likely has nothing to do with sex workers and everything Mm -hmm. to do with convenience uh with these neighborhoods uh, there's going to be people on the streets at uh, all hours of the day and night. Uh, police should be looking for a black male, late 30s. Um, the lady in our conversation, Ben, on Facebook, that was my criminology mm-hmm. professor la- from last year. Uh, oh, nice. She, yes. So she, um, I'm going to go with her idea that he's maybe later, late 30s. Uh, originally, I thought it might be a white male. Um, mid uh between 25 to 35 uh but after finding out that most of the victims were black i'm going to change it to a black male and after talking with her i'm going to change it to late 30s uh but not discount white males either given that some of the victims were white Mm -hmm. uh he likely has some military training and possibly made a career out of it but didn't stand out or make very uh make very many rank advancements. Uh, probably recently discharged, uh, most likely army. Uh, likely single, possibly divorced. Uh, working for a municipality, uh, was likely a juvenile arsonist, uh, probably before he entered the military. Uh, below average IQ, he's insecure. Uh, likely below average height and build, which would give me a uh, reason why he's so insecure. Mm -hmm. Uh, was probably among the smallest of his unit while in the military he tends to keep to himself and shoots people to feel powerful where this murder difference or differs from the previously mentioned serial killers uh, such as uh, edward edwards zodiac son of sam who all had similar uh, mo's um, is that he murders individuals rather than couples or pairs of people Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, this has nothing to do with sex workers and everything to do with convenience. He'll also likely return to each crime scene in between murders during his cooling off periods in order to relive the killings and get off of the uh, get off to them. But it's just as likely in this day and age uh, that he filmed the attacks on a GoPro or with his phone in order to relive them that way so that he couldn't be caught uh, returning to the scene of the crime. Uh, he will eventually attempt to communicate with police and, and media. Uh, he's a disorganized killer, which means uh, disorganized killers either dump the bodies or leave them where they kill them, which in this, in all three cases, we've seen both. They're spontaneous. Uh, they depersonalize by using a gun or other means, such as explosives. Uh, crime scenes are not random. Uh, They have no restraint. Bodies were left in view. Uh, I'm also going to say that he was likely adopted or grew up in foster care, possibly even raised by a grandparent, aunt, or uncle. Right. Mm. I was going to say, you think maybe these killings have something to do with something that happened in the past? And because I I was reading an article that um, they're looking into, like, dating apps like craigslist and stuff maybe he's looking for certain types of females generally with serial killers it does have to go back to the oedipus complex Mm -hmm. um they they something happens in their child childhood generally related to their mothers that um kind of steers them throughout their serial killing later on in life uh, which determines who they choose and why. Uh, they may not even know it for, um, but it's in the back of their heads usually. Right. Yeah. It's, it's like a break, yeah. pretty much. I'm right. thinking when you talk about the military side of it, part of me was wondering if maybe he spent time in Germany or Europe. Okay. Where you've got areas like the red light district drugs have been legal in Amsterdam and stuff like that where uh, he would have had access to things like that. Okay. That maybe 
he ran into a problem over there with them mm. that maybe could have initiated his thought process in, all right, I have to find a way to start eliminating this. Right. So we start going after possible sex traffickers or uh, drug-related situations. And see, that's one of the um, theories on Jack the Ripper was that uh, he went after prostitutes because he caught like an STD from them or something like that. Right. Uh, which, as uh, those of you who've read the book know, that that wasn't <laughs> my theory, but it's still a possibility overall. Right. Totally. I wanted to to point out possibly just listening to the profile. The fact that he was in the military and you're saying probably most likely army, Josh, you might be able to speak even more to this. I'm wondering about uh, a soldier suffering from PTSD in terms of uh, the precipitating factor, because there's they're always with most serial killers is a precipitating event, something that happens in their life that, you know, launches them into what they're going to become. Uh, you know, I was thinking uh, what could have been the uh, the trigger for this guy and the fact that he might have been in the army, that could have been something that might have triggered him coming back from that. Uh, well, there again, I think it, that could be a possibility, maybe a childhood trauma yeah. that was drug related. Mm -hmm. that when he was in the army let's say he was in europe where drugs were and everything else were abundant yeah. right he starts to see that again that traumatization that Comes ptsd back. starts to come back uh i don't think that uh or from the sounds of it and my personal experiences i don't think that uh a wartime ptsd would be involved in this one right that makes sense. Okay. Uh, and that's fair. the reason i say that is that a wartime ptsd situation usually is some type of sound uh the effects of seeing your buddy die next to you i mean that right. those are unbelievably traumatizing and they're hard to deal with but these yeah. don't they seem unre they're unrelated right so mm. it's not somebody that's close to him uh so i don't sure. think that uh, so actions like that are kind of tipping as PTSD point. And but most serial killers, see... that makes sense. and most serial killers have personality disorders like um, antisocial personality disorder, uh, borderline personality disorder, histri yeah. histrionic personality disorder, stuff like that. So his time in the service could have amplified those disorders as well. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, but yeah, Josh, I also, what, sorry. what have you seen from uh, smaller soldiers during your time in the army? Uh, do they have um, kind of a Napoleon complex almost or? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've known some who still kind of tucked away they kind of hid from everything else mm -hmm. uh and that's what this situation seems more like you know he kind of sit back watch what's going on around him and take action on what's happening around him versus the napoleon complex where they try to make themselves bigger than they really are right mm -hmm. uh they're the ones that have that napoleon complex tend to uh push themselves to actually try to be bigger and now, you're going to see, see a better soldier out of them because of trying to be better than the person next to him. Now, so I can I don't... see this guy possibly evolving into a Napoleon complex type guy. Because like we saw with Edward Edwards, Zodiac, Son of Sam, they all eventually contacted the media, contacted the police, developed their names, uh, except for Edward Edwards. But Zodiac came up with his own name. Uh, Son of Sam came up with his own name they wanted to make themselves bigger than they actually were edward edwards wrote a book um and tried to uh he went at, out as a public speaker really uh at, before he got convicted of killing this um 
unofficially adopted son of his for the insurance money who was an army veteran um and then he was caught and arrested and uh but yeah each, each of them were very like josh said very um standoffish almost at first and then they built up and the or and developed a napoleon complex where they wanted to make themselves bigger than they actually are mm. yeah yeah it, my experience with the with smaller soldiers trying to or gaining that napoleon complex they're the ones that actually tend to be more successful mm -hmm. and it actually works for them because they have to work harder right? They push themselves to work harder. Mm. Uh, in this situation specifically, I don't think he pushed himself to work harder. Right. Right. I think he was sitting back gathering information and trying to decide what to do with that information. Mm. So do you think, uh, given the information and what you know, um, do you think he might eventually attempt to contact the media and build his uh maybe build his legend bigger than it actually is it, based off of the connections with all the killings so far i don't think so okay uh because the killings seem to be pretty i mean they're close together as far as you know groups of three or four uh but they're not directly related as far as locations this group of four is this group of four or three is in uh st louis uh the next group of uh killings was in or you had east st louis and he had st louis right uh i don't think he's trying to build up any type of credibility i think he's trying to go after something that he sees as a problem mm -hmm and trying to eliminate that problem himself. Uh, so mm. I don't think he's going to come forward as a serial killer. And I think that this could just continue to loom on. So and, you think maybe he's he sees himself as almost a vigilante almost? Yeah. Yeah. Like his own maybe. twisted version of the Punisher? So he, wor yeah. he works... He works kind of like Gary Ridgway, except without the sexual component to the crime itself. Right. Yeah, because Gary Ridgway was all about prostitutes being the the scum of the earth. They had to go. So maybe this guy's the same way, but he's and just related into the sexual part. And I believe the Yorkshire Ripper was as well, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Um, you said that. Sutcliffe. Yeah. One of the family members. He died just last year, by the way, from uh, COVID. He did. He did yeah. Wow. You said one of the family members said that one of the girls that was killed was like a hustler, right? Right. So maybe she was a drug dealer and he saw her as a problem, a bigger problem than, you know, <laughs> yeah, he perhaps. figured take that out of the equation and maybe watch the city clean itself up a little bit. But, you know, when that usually happens and somebody else tries to step up and it gets twice as bad. Right. I will um, say this. I, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, um, I think the profile spot on. The only place I disagree is is I think it's a white guy, and white the guy. reason why the reason why I think it's a white guy is because in doing some research and sort of looking into past killers, oddly enough, guns isn't really the favorite method of killing for African American men. Right. Uh, especially when it comes to prostitutes and women. So I kind of looked at that and I went, but guns are very popular with white men. However, this is where I disagree. Look at mm. the DC snipers. Sure, sure. Okay. No, that's a good, that's a and, very good point. And they had yeah. a very similar profile as well. The only difference was they were a team rather than an individual. Yeah. I think where I was sitting, because you're absolutely right there, but there's something about the team thing there that right. that sits with me. A single lone gunman feels so much more like Berkowitz or Zodiac, who right. we're, we're pretty sure were white guys. Um, and if he's going after victims of convenience, 
uh, then it it almost you know the the fact that they're prostitutes may not matter at all. It may just simply be these are the people in close proximity to me. These are who I'm going to go after. Right. And most um, serial killers, you know, they strangely enough, they're kind of attracted to their victims. Yeah, which is what made me think black male because there were so many black yeah. victims. Uh, and normally serial killers, they'll kind of stick with their own race. Um, I forget what his name was. And uh, he was on the last season of Mindhunter. Um, uh, I forget his name now, but uh, everyone thought he was going to be a white guy, probably a Klansman or whatever, uh, before the FBI arrested him. And even to this day, the victim's family is still... Oh, that was Wayne Williams. Yeah, right? Wayne Williams. Yeah, uh, even to this day, his, uh, the victims' families will argue that it wasn't him. It, was, it had to be a Klansman because they couldn't imagine uh, a member of their race doing something like this. The weird thing is, I watched a documentary on Wayne Williams recently, where um, the amount of evidence to support him actually not having been the Atlanta child murderer mm -hmm. is becoming significant even though not enough to hold up in a court of law for them to let him out enough for people to be like wait a second uh it really feels like when you this particular documentary really made it feel like he in many ways got railroaded mm -hmm. by a judicial system and a, a, yeah. a state that was like we have to nail this guy and we have to nail him now or we're gonna suffer and the first guy they got saw him on the bridge right he was with his car and they had heard a splash they thought he'd thrown a body over the side of the bridge and in the end aside from him knowing many of the victims there wasn't a lot of physical evidence that actually connected him to those crimes right and so that's why at times i think there's even parents of victims who are like no somebody's still out there who did this stuff and got away with it so it's and like, I wonder if that's why it's possible it the Atlanta child murder could have been a white guy as well. So it's kind of like the Tennessee jury. Yeah. They pretty much convicted them because this one, he listened to rock and roll and said he believed yeah. in the devil. And they was like, only somebody like that. Oh, it must have been them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah myself, I can totally see that. I myself, when I was in school, I was the only kid, uh, gothic kid in a school of 300 students. So I, there were all the time, I would go in the bathroom and see uh, the people calling me the antichrist or saying that I was gonna shoot up the school. This was also during the time of Columbine. So yeah, people expected is. because I dressed in all black and everything that I was gonna come in and shoot up the school or something. Um, and that sort of, that, that I think is, uh, and, I think what happened in Atlanta was Wayne Williams was a weirdo. I mean, as uh, like, if you hear him talk, mm -hmm. he wasn't, he wasn't a, he was an odd dude who mm -hmm. liked to hang around with younger kids, let, you know, like to fancy himself a recording artist and a, and a recording producer. Um, and he had way too big an ego in that department to and and i think that people just went "Ooh, it's him he's weird i don't like him and he ended up getting convicted on very little actual physical evidence right you know i mean they were able to match the carpet fibers yes they were but all that proved was that the kids were in his car at some point which the fact that he was constantly recording these kids in the studio could mean i mean we know he was a gay man um so we know that there is uh an element of that to him but we also know that being gay doesn't necessarily mean you have anything to do with children in any way right. shape or right. form right right so it almost feels like if you look at the time period it was the 70s right uh, yeah, uh, okay. not a fashionable thing to to be that in the 70s and uh you know he was kind of openly that he wasn't really you know he never had women around or anything like that but his behavior after he got, after the media started getting involved and you see all these shots of him coming out of the house and making a big deal out of it and still to this day, maintaining his innocence. Now, 
I want to say before I say that, you know, there's something to be said about maintaining your innocence right to the end. So did John Wayne Gacy. And we all know, how do you, how do you (laughs) in any way debate having 33 bodies under your house? Right. Well, I I watched the documentary on Peacock about John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. And, you know, Gacy admitted to a lot of them, but there's also ones where he was like, I don't remember this one. I don't, I don't know who this is. I don't remember this one. And he had uh, a guy living with him that would drive back and forth from Vegas. Yep. Um, I was like every other weekend or something like that, I think it said. And they're like, well, I'm wondering if, you know, dude knew that Gacy was killing these these boys and was like, hey, we can do it. I, I've always wanted to kill somebody. We yeah. can put more air down there. He ain't going to say anything. Like, Well, know. not only that, but... Uh, at one point, Gacy had uh, four other serial killers working with for him, yeah. the Chicago Ripper crew. Um, that's right, yeah. So, I mean, that's... I'm wondering if... Because a lot Sorry, of guys, times... Guys, I just have to check my plug. It's fine. Uh, a lot of times, serial killers will kind of overlap and kind of run into each other every once in a while. And yeah. I'm wondering if they're uh, drawn together. It could be. I mean, it really could. Um, like I said, Gacy, you know, yeah, because Gacy, he was a lot of things. But the dude was honest a lot from what I could tell. I mean, you could also tell when he was lying. <laughs> right. Well, the but, only thing is, when I, what I read most recently was uh, at towards the end, like, so – when Gacy first got arrested, <clears throat> I think he had that moment of being like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, you found the bodies in my crawl space. What can I, you know? But then after some time in prison, all of a sudden he started recanting everything he said. Mm-hmm. And, and then right before they executed him, his last words apparently were, I didn't do this and whoever did will pay for it or something to that effect that he maintained his innocence right up until he was, you know, electrocuted. Right. And I'm like, but that was after some change happened while he was in prison. Well, a lot of serial go, killers. Whoa, whoa, a <laughs> lot of serial killers will have like two parts of themselves. Um, yes. So they they don't really see themselves as the one doing the killing. They see themselves as an innocent victim of the murderer, you know, yeah. um, like with uh, uh, BTK, Factor X was the uh, what ca- led it, caused him to do it. Um, and most serial killers are able to like balance that out. Some of them, like the uh, Hillside Strangler um, and the Night Stalker, they do it openly. You know, they they can't balance that. But yeah. most of them, uh, before they are caught and everything kind of unravels on them, they are able to balance that and see them as two distinct people. And that's actually, your, to your point, that's exactly what happened with John Wayne Gacy. Something in prison turned it around and he claimed that he was two people. He was John and Jack. Right. Yeah. And Jack was the one who did all the murders. John had nothing to do with it. And so that was the, the argument he came up with while he was in prison. Now, whatever happened that made him sort of go that way, who knows? Could have been uh, after seeing like a therapist or psychologist. Sure. Uh, they put him on some kind of medicine that just kind of snapped him back to John and him being like, oh, it wasn't me. I didn't do this. Yeah. I mean, bipolar disorder, uh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it, which it, if that's the case, you gotta you gotta argue maybe they belong more in a hospital than in a prison if that's what's yeah. happening, right? Right. Yeah, but it'd be too easy for them to escape the hospital as a thing. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. Don't want that possibility right. either. I mean, look at um, uh, I'm having brain farts all over. after dealing with the whole internet thing this morning. It's kind of sapped all my mental. Um, <laughs> I get that. <laughs> um, crap. What's his name? He uh, Ted Bundy. 
Uh, look at Ted Bundy. You know, yeah. he just. So, I mean, but let's go back to uh, this profile uh, on this killer. Do you think he was the same one who did the Ohio murders? I possible. I yeah, I think it's possible. I think if he moved Ohio and St. Louis ain't that you know much of a distance, right? So it would be uh, location wise, it would be somewhat a logical move uh, from one to the other, right? Like you, yeah, like you said. He was in Ohio in 18. And then, you know, he could possibly have military background. Is there a base in Ohio? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, could have went Unless off base. He was reserves. I mean, but, yeah. well, I mean, maybe he, it, if he it, was it, raised in the St. Louis area and then you've got, you, you've got stations like Fort Drum, New York, which is upstate New York, I would have to drive through Ohio every time. Right. Yeah. So maybe it could, you know that convenience killing maybe he stops in ohio every time on his way home right maybe and those were the time frames that maybe he was on leave maybe that was the time frames as he was getting ready to get out yeah now josh do given what you know about these victims does this scream uh military veteran to you honestly i don't know if it screams military veteran so much uh because you would almost think i was listening to some of the locations of the gunshot wounds uh -huh. and none of them really seem like he was taking aim okay right a military veteran would take aim i'd want to be accurate yeah uh and you know you had but... one in the neck one in the head i think one was in the chest i mean the shot itself seems so inaccurate. But when we look at uh, Zodiac, Edward Edwards, and Son of Sam, <laughs> they none of them really took aim. Zodiac, he had a flashlight in the guy's eyes, approached their vehicles, and just started shooting. You know, Son of Sam, he'd walk off on, to him and shoot. I, I think only one of his victims actually died. Yeah, um, he wasn't particularly careful right. about how he shot um zodiac he's thought to be a navy veteran uh edward edwards was a marine a dishonorably discharged marine uh son of sam he was army um i don't think edwards or son of sam saw any actual uh conflict i don't think they were deployed or anything no, uh, Berkowitz, I think, was a re reserve. I think he was on state side the whole time. Which might um, account for it if he's, uh, like you said, in Ohio, with it only being, what was it, reserves? Is the yeah. base in Ohio? Yeah, there, uh, there's no active duty base in Ohio. So it would have to be, if you're looking at something like that, Fort Drum, New York is in upstate New York. Uh, Fort Lee or Fort Eustis, Virginia. Those would all be travel points through Ohio. Uh, on the, well, I don't know. Virginia might be a little bit south. It may take a southern route to St. Louis. So um, the only base that I can really think of that would, or active duty base would be Fort Drum, New York that would have any involvement between St. Louis and uh, Ohio. So uh, if he was reserved army, then that could account for him not really taking aim. It could account for him um, not really making rank advancements uh, very frequently, wanting to kind of hold himself back. Uh, I, I would actually argue against that one in the reserves the rank opportunities open up faster okay so uh him wanting to make rank uh would be dependent i would say almost on his history i guess now we're wanting to place him as the kind of guy that's in the background so he wasn't trying to make a name for himself right. which is why i don't think he'll come to the news and media again right i don't think he wants to make a name for himself I think he's 
uh, vindictive more so. Uh, mm. So I think that would, if he was in the military, that was the reason he didn't make rank. He didn't push himself to want to make rank. He didn't push himself to want to be better. Uh, he got hid in the background. So do you think um, that would be make it more likely for him to be in the reserves, though? Or do you think it would have been more likely that he was on uh, regular full-fledged army? Uh, I think that would push him more towards reserve or national guard than it would active. Okay. Active duty, you don't know where you're going to wind up or when. Right. Or what group of people you're going to wind up with. Uh, where with the reserve or national guard, you tend to stay within your state, uh, especially in the reserves. So you already know your community. You already know who you're going to be uh, standing next to in line. Um, so I would almost say that if he was in the military, it would have been reserves. That's what I'm thinking as well. Um, and then that would still allow him the opportunity to move as needed. You know, maybe he was in the Ohio reserves and then moved to either Illinois or Missouri reserves. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and name this guy. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if anyone else has thought of a name for him, but since the majority of these murders took place in St. Louis, even East St. Louis is considered a part of St. Louis, technically. I'm going to call him the Cardinal Killer. Oh, I like that's good. Yeah. Okay. So, so any closing thoughts before we end this? Um, I, I just quickly in terms of your profile, Shannon. Mm -hmm. Um, can you think of any just off the top of your head? Because I was trying to figure out any outside of the DC snipers. Okay. Can you think of any African American serial killers that's that their preferred method of murder was a gun, walking up and shooting somebody on the street? Hmm. Um, and I was trying to rack my brain to think if I could think of any, and then I was kept coming back to the fact that Berkowitz—that's how he operated Zodiac. That that's and both of them. That's I think that's why my gut Ber goes Berkowitz, to white male. Berkowitz was Jewish. Yep. Yeah. Um. There was one, the most, there's one killer. He has the highest body count of all out of any serial killer. He was black. I can't remember. Um, I think there was, was the grim sleeper, but I don't think, I think he strangled his victims. Lonnie, what was it Lonnie Anderson? Lonnie, no, Lonnie Anderson. Lonnie somebody. <laughs> um <sighs> I can't think of it. This guy, he I believe he was in uh, California. I think he was on one of my videos for uh, serial killers in California. Hmm. Uh, I can't remember. I, I want to say it starts with an S, though. Um, Sam Little. Sam Little. Yay, yeah, Samuel Little. How did he kill his victims? I, I'm pretty sure wasn't didn't he rape and strangle? Uh, let's check. All right. Uh, American serial killer who confessed to murdering 93 people, mostly women. Wow. He was convicted in 2012 for the murders of. Uh, yeah, it's a ridiculous people. number. Uh, in 2018, he was convicted for the federal murder of Denise Christie Brothers. Uh, the FBI confirmed Little's involvement in at least 60 of the 93 confessed murders, largest number of cases of any serial killer in the United States history, uh, most prolific serial killer in U.S. history. Um, let's see here. Let me go to. What well, was Lonnie Franklin was the grim sleeper. Okay. Let me go to Murderpedia. They usually tell exactly what their uh, preferred method of murder is. And I only say this because in, in the.
around and come up with. It looks like the large majority of African American serial killers rape um, strangulation, yeah. close contact it, killing seems to be the, it, the where they lean anyway. That's what it said was Samuel L. Uh, strangled most of his. So you're right. It, uh, I, I think um, more than likely my original analysis would be that he's likely a white guy then. I think um, so. I think may, my gut says that that you were right the first time that right. that this is a white guy who's operating in an area of convenience. It just so happens these happen to be right. African American females. What, what's throwing so me could off? It be, could it be the part of his evolution might be that he's become more racist? That's true. That's possible. Ooh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Maybe something uh, happened. Gang violence killed what, family or what's, something. What's throwing sure, me off possibly. is the lack of information on these victims, though. So yes, that's, what, yeah. that's what's really throwing me off on this. I but was yeah. like, if we could just even know ballistics, even know right. the caliber of the weapon and whether or not the caliber is the same, but you got to figure, I guess, if they brought the FBI in, you're probably mm -hmm. looking at a similar caliber weapon in all of those murders. Yeah. yeah. So, Jared, what are your final thoughts? My final thoughts, uh, yeah, if if this was just gang violence, they wouldn't have brought in the FBI. Um, definitely not, because I mean it's it's St. Louis. They have they have it all the time. The FBI never gets brought in. Right. Um, I believe uh, if if the vigilante thing, I I don't think it's really far fetched. I think it it mm -hmm. could be a possibility, like. Maybe he was in the military and, uh, you know, he seen some stuff, came home. Um, maybe something made him snap and he's thinking he's fighting the war at home. You know, um, mm -hmm. other than that, uh, you know, that's it. I, I, I do believe that it's connected. It's all, it's all definitely connected. Josh, what are your final thoughts? <sighs> I, find, I don't think he was active. I would definitely say that it was a reserve situation. I don't think that he was deployed at any time. Uh, it's quite possible that his time in the military, if he was, was very minimal. Uh, he doesn't seem to be a person that wants to stand out, so I don't think he's going to push himself to stand out. Uh, and there's some of it that just seems so sporadic and just out of place. Just every once in a while, there's one that doesn't match. Right. Mm. And maybe that could become part of his MO. Like every fourth one, I've got to do something different with. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much so, how that's how so it we've got the one strangulation that yeah. it definitely seems odd. Uh, and then when you look at the uh, Missouri and Illinois killings, what was it? Uh, I think there was one white female in that group, mm -hmm. mm. right? Yeah. So another thing that would, something like, okay, if I make every fourth or fifth killing something odd, maybe it can throw them off a little bit. Like a strangulation, a white sure. female, and then a male. Change up your MO so right. that it throws the trail off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ben, so I mean, that's 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 one possibility that was coming to my mind as we were talking. So yeah. Mm. Ben, you want to give uh, another final thought since we kind of. Oh, sure. I think I think your your initial profile is uh, to me like right on. I think that it's got the uh, it's got all the elements to it. Um, I think we're, I think they're looking at somebody who is definitely not going to stop. I'm not a hundred percent sure whether he's going to be the type to communicate with police, mm -hmm. but, um, it's possible. And I think that it's, it's going to, if they don't get him soon, it's going to escalate. Right. Yeah. Eventually I do think if they don't catch him, it may turn into a, uh, mass murderer situation. Uh, exactly possibly evolving into kind of a dc sniper type thing yeah um but yeah i i 
the only thing I'm going back and forth on is the uh, race of the uh, killer. Sure. But that's just because there's so little information being released on the victims. victims. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything else, I'm I'm pretty adamant about. Uh, I agree with Josh about uh, how he he was likely reserved. Mm-hmm. Um, I I, I want to say with everything I've learned in my psychology classes and everything, I don't think he was deployed. Um, I don't think it's a situation of PTSD. No, uh, um, he he was very likely low level, um, not really interested in advancement at all, uh, not interested in standing out. Um, probably on his way to developing a Napoleon complex, uh, mm-hmm. if he hasn't already. Um, but yeah, I I am I think I'll stand by my uh, my profile. Yeah, I think it's a solid profile. So um, we'll go and end this with a plug for Jack the Ripper, the man behind the blade, uh, narrated by the very talented Ben Hunter there in Thank the you. red room. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. So um, do you guys want to make this a regular thing? Yeah. That would be sweet. I'm I'd down. totally get down with that when i can not a problem yeah josh yeah. he's the, how uh, busy i can be so yeah josh is the uh, head of the american legion in his neighborhood so oh you've yeah. got to be busy to them yeah well i cover eight counties so oh my goodness yeah <laughs> definitely but you know what like shannon it would be super cool to to pick up on this with you guys as this case moves forward to yeah. learn Sounds more good, things yeah. about it yeah i will uh I will definitely keep my eye on the news about this. Um, the Cardinal Killer. Yeah, the Cardinal yeah. Killer. There we go. I, I don't know how the uh, baseball organization will feel about that name, but yeah, they may not hey. be very happy about that. But <laughs> also, I, I'm uh, a Cubs. I'm a Cubs fan myself, so any well, any go. chance I get help to support uh, it, then. <laughs> <laughs> also, when when uh, you put this up, let me know, and I'll I'll link it. Okay, to, nice. this, to the <laughs> Facebook page. All right. I'll be uploading Sweet. it this evening, probably as soon as we're done here. So just yeah. do, I'm just doing my my pity plug, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll probably do more of these maybe every once a week or once a month, something like that. Definitely more cool. in the wintertime whenever I'm not in school and Josh isn't in school and all right. for sure. So. Oh, I've got classes all the way through till next summer right now. Oh, wow, man. Wow. <laughs> Josh is actually going to school for accounting right now. He is the reason I wow. made it through my algebra classes. Wow. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Accounting with a minor in financial planning. So, wow. When I get out Amazing. of school, come see me for your financial needs. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've made a deal with him once i get my doctorate that I'll, so many I'll plugs give, I'll, 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 give, I'll give his family uh psychiatric or psychological treatment in exchange Perfect. for his financial <laughs> so then i'll get in on this too and just say if anybody has anybody who knows anybody who's writing books that they want narrated <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look him up. He's on ACX. Uh, ben Hunter, Benjamin. Yep, uh, that's me. So, well, until next time, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks, right. guys. Pleasure to meet you. Take it easy. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Give us a like, leave a comment below, and please share the video with your family and friends. I've been Shannon, and this has been Psychology of the Unknown.